Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy to be with you and excited to go over this card and how we are going to make it our own. I wanted first to highlight my thought process behind getting a piece of art like this and creating it for myself. What I do when I look at a piece like this is break it down. So I really like this little cluster here. I like this cluster here and I like how it flows this way and it's full and kind of gives a little bit of non-negative space on this angle. So we are going to duplicate this card and I'm gonna show you how, so come along. All right, so let me go over some of the supplies that we're gonna be working with. Our Princeton Heritage number two, Princeton Heritage number six, and a number eight for our leaves. And this number two is for our fine detail. We're also going to need a protractor to create our wreath circle. If you don't have this, you can use the cap of your water jar, a roll of tape, the inside of a roll of tape, a coaster, the bottom of your coffee or tea mug, anything that's circular. And then from there, if, even if you don't like the size, if you want it bigger, you can, at least you have a circle frame to be able to kind of make it a little bigger. And it doesn't have to be exact, you could freehand it too. So we're first going to begin by creating our circle for our wreath, which will give us help give us some dimension for our lettering as well. I like to use my handy dandy protractor. And here you can kind of give yourself an idea of the space. So here is where my wreath would end and I would have all this space here. So I can either fill it in more with the foliage, but coming up here, I don't have as much space up here to do that. So might bring it out a little bit more and see if that helps me a tad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start there. So I'm going to, this gives me a big space here, so I know when I'm creating my wreath that I'm going to be filling in quite a bit in this area here. Take my handy dandy eraser. I love these kneaded erasers because they do not give you the little eraser fallings. So I'm just gonna lighten the circle so I know it's there, but if I happen to use a lighter color, it won't come through as much in the watercolor. So I already have some colors mixed. I swatched them for you because I used a mixture for the leaves of these four colors here. And I can't tell you exactly what percentage, and it's up to you what you're gonna like for your leaves. This one is uh, Pearling Green. This one is by Roman, I believe. This one is my Permanent Sap Green by Jackson. And this one is a Hooker's Green Light by Windsor & Newton. And then this is the neutral tint. I used neutral tint in my last video. And so I just wanted to show you guys what it actually looks like. Black. So it does wonders when you mix it in, it makes it a really deep, like I'm, I think I mixed it into the sap green with maybe some hooker's green type thing and used all those. And just to kind of deepen the green. And then for the berries, I used this uh, Perline Maroon. This was by Grumbacher. And then I, Wanted just to kind of pinky it up a little bit, so I added in this Quidacridone Magenta by Daniel Smith. And if you wanted to just use one or the other, you don't have to mix them, but I just wanted to let you know what I used for my palette. All right, so we're going to begin with the berries. I'm just activating my red. I like to have the little clusters. You can kind of put them anywhere you want. But I'm just gonna begin by making circles, and I'm gonna leave on some of them, these larger ones, this little white space here that is going to mimic a little glare, a little shiny spot. And then I'm gonna, because I wanna make sure and create some fullness in here so this space isn't as big, I'm gonna kind of work inside a little bit as well as outside. So I think the berries will help me with that, fill in things. That's, that's a good thing about having things like berries or twigs or filler, like in a real wreath. So then I think I'm gonna do a little cluster here. And you can even make these different shades of colors, different shades of reds. But I like to put these berries in first because going over the leaves and things like that is harder with the reds, so. 
I like to put these in and then kind of fill in around them. And creating these wreaths for me is a lot like working on the little trees that we did in the last video. It's just kind of cathartic and relaxing and you're just kind of figuring out like, okay, where do I put this leaf? Where do I put this berry? And it's just relaxing. Just like our trees, the exciting part is that every, each wreath is gonna be different and that's the fun part of it. I think I'm going to wait and do some of the rest of the little berries as I know where the rest of my foliage is gonna go. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the leaves. And here's the fun part, you just get to kind of like fill in leaves and just put in details. And leaves are pretty easy. They you load up your brush. This is a size eight. And you want to, let's find a good spot, maybe here. You want to, at a slight angle, basically push your whole brush down and drag it up. And as you do, creates the tip, sometimes. <laughs> and you can even do, one of my favorites is to do the kind of like side. So you bring it down, you press, and you just kind of move it off the side and it makes this cute little half moon shape leaf. If you don't like some of them, you can, some of the shape, you can come in and add a little bit more detail just to kind of round it out. Okay, I think I'm gonna dilute a little bit of what I have left. We're gonna come in and make some even lighter versions of that color. And it's pretty intimidating for me to just come in and lay all this down because you don't know where anything's gonna go. But I just do it and I let go. And that's the beauty of it. So we're gonna continue with our same size eight brush and move on to another color. Let's see, what do I have here? This one is a watered down Perling green, which is a little darker, I believe. So we're just gonna come in and continue on. If we go back to our reference photo, we can look at how they have their leaves positioned. I really like this little cluster here, but they just layered leaves on top of each other, which as we get to these darker colors will be a little easier to do and we can vary the size with our brush. So I'm just kind of trying to, you know, mimic this a little bit with the leaves. There's not, it's more leaves than anything else, but it's not that many leaves because you have the big berries and things, so. All right, so now we're going to go in with a little darker green. This is the Perline green just by itself, fully saturated with our size six. We'll just put in some smaller leaves on top. See, we have a little bleed. That one was still a little wet, but I think it'll look interesting. We'll see. So just creating this dimension with the colors layering them on top of each other, some visual interest. All right, so now we're gonna work on our filler and we're gonna move to our size two here. I think what I'm going to do is add a little brown to some green. And I like how they did the line of the wreath with kind of multi strands, almost like a grapevine wreath, instead of it being like a pine tree piece all the way through or just leaves. So I have some sepia and neutral tint here left over from my trees. And I'm going to mix that with some green. Any green will do. This one is the olive green. I think it's perline maybe with some sap green. I'm not really sure. You can use just brown if you want. So I'm just gonna kinda come in here and make these line following my faint line of my, that my pencil line that I drew. 
and just kind of making the this detail. And no one, this probably won't even be seen very much with the detail, but I liked the idea of it. And you can overlap things, you know, in, into kind of here because it just makes it look more realistic when it's kind of bunched up and overlapping like that. Here's where I'm gonna kind of get into the outlying parts of it. And this is where if I want, I can have some pine sprigs come out here or these berries can be connected. We can go ahead and connect these here. So now we're going to move on to the pine trees, the pine branches, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put them. This might be a good spot here, come off there and then here. So I think I'm gonna mix a little bit more green with this brown and see if I can get a more green, just for some contrast to our twigs that we put down there. I think I kinda like one coming off here. This we can leave here and add some berries if we wanted. The easy trick with the pine trees, let me get some more stems in here just for placement. The key to the pine branches is you want to pick three shades of green, a light, a medium, and a dark. So I have that here. I'm gonna have this light be my hooker's green, the medium be this blend of, I think it's hooker's green and pearling green, and then just straight pearling green. And you'll see the dimension that it creates. So we'll take our size two, and we'll just add our little, these are our little sprigs. We're just starting the beginning of our pine tree, pine branch, spruce branch. And this is where you can just, you just have fun with it. Make it wispy. Then you come in with your medium green and it's pretty dry because it wasn't that much. And you layer on top of that the exact same pattern technique that you used before. You don't have to try and space it out or anything. Just layer it right on top. Just layer on your darker green and it creates this beautiful visual effect of dimension and rather than just a straight, straight green, gives it a little bit more complexity. All right, so this one is pretty dry. So we're gonna do our dark green in here. Add our dark green. Isn't that beautiful? I just love how on this side you can see pretty much all three of the colors. It's just so, gives it so much dimension. I might try and make that some other form of foliage, maybe this one too. We'll see. I'm gonna skip that one for now and I'm gonna move to this one. So we're, again, we're gonna do our light green from the main branch, the stem. And we're just gonna do these very wispy, light pine needles. And then when we get to the top, we're just gonna kinda dome it, fill it in, make it kind of round. That looks lovely, right there. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry just a tad and then I'm gonna do our dark green on this one. And one thing that's oh, so hard to remember for me with watercolor is that these dark colors just create such a dynamic pop and beauty to the piece. It sets it off like a contrast. And sometimes I get afraid to use dark colors because it does stand out so much, but it just makes it when after you do it, you're like, wow, that really stands out and pops. 
So we are pretty much finished with our pine twigs, spruce leaves, and I'm really liking this so far. I'm loving how full it is. When we do our word, it's going to kind of blend the whole page together. I'm loving how these dark colors sit on the lighter colors. We have a little bit more filling in to do here and here and here. You could stop now if you wanted. You could add gold pieces, gold uh, metallic dots or stars or anything, any kind of detail you want. But I'm gonna just kind of continue on and fill in with some more foliage, maybe some more leaves, maybe some different kind of, here they used leaves, we have the berries, we have these spruce type twigs, and then this thing here, which is just what I would call the filler, just little pieces kind of coming around to give it that dimension. So we're gonna work on those kinds of things. Now that detail, and it's hard. So I think what I'm gonna do is create this kind of different foliage here. I'm starting out light so that I can kind of feel it out. So we're not really doing a spruce, but it's in that same family, but they're sparser, maybe even thicker leaves. Let's maybe come in with our medium green and do, maybe we can try and do some leaves on these. Just to kind of give us some more depth, dimension. We can even do one kind of off to the side here. All right, now I'm gonna take my lightest green, which was this hooker's green, and I'm just going to do these little sprays from filling in white parts. I'm just gonna like this, just like it would be little, just little pieces that come out. And you want some to come out kind of far some kind of short. Basically, we're just filling in wherever there's white space. Setting myself up for some more little berries. So now I'm gonna do a few more berries on these things like this that are just kind of shooting out of nowhere. Just fun little pieces. to add a little bit more pop and dimension. Now we're just kind of looking at it and seeing where do we need a little bit of balance. Sometimes you'll make these wreaths and you'll have all the berries in certain spots. So you have to just kind of look at it with that kind of eye. I think that looks great. All right, so we're gonna let this dry a little bit and we'll come back in and I'll show you the wording. All right, I think we are pretty dry. So what I have done, because I am not a letter yet, I traced this beautiful joy with just a piece of tracing paper. Just go over it, trace it out. I can put it anywhere I want, which is nice. And I like to kind of be cognitive of that and look I'm coming out there too so I did a good job filling in that space so I think I'm gonna try and avoid this spruce twig as much as possible because I've created all that beautiful wreath work and I don't want to have to cover it up if I don't have to and my word will fit so I think that's good now what what you have to do with tracing paper is trace your word and then you have to flip it over and trace that again in order to get it reading the right way because when you trace it it's going to be backward you're going to have to flip it over so and then the hb pencils are the best for giving you the trace then i just take it and take a peek oh it's pretty good i think i'm going to go a little darker here so i can see a little bit better if i can 
Okay, looks pretty good. And I, in the past, have used a Posca pen, a acrylic paint pen, but with the tooth of this paper, it gets a little hard because it'll scratch and then it'll kind of flick everywhere. So I'm gonna try with my paints. I have these beautiful metallic paints, I'll show them to you. And I'm gonna try and fill it in that way. So I'm just getting rid of a little bit of this darker tracing. So this part is really faint for me to see. I can see the tail end right there. But really, when doing this card, you have to just kind of go where you think it is. And that is why this is easier than the paint, but we're gonna try it with the paint. So I have all of these beautiful metallics and this is Calero Pearl Colors. And I think I'm going to, just kind of looking and seeing what would be really pretty. I, I'm drawn to kind of the pinkies. This one's really pretty. It's a little more of like a copper, but I think the gold is just gonna be really brilliant. And this gold is a lot like this gold, so maybe I'll work with this one, we'll see. Yeah, I think I will. And I think I'm gonna try and do a even smaller brush for this even though it might take me a while. So this is a two tenths Pro Art Master Stroke. They hold more paint than you think. You think, ooh, it's just gonna be a little one and done, but nope. So you'll see, I'll get in here. Um, but you can use black, you can use Sharpie or um, Micron, you know, whatever you have and wanna use. If you're good at lettering and already have that ability, then more power to you. I'm gonna start with my little dot. And this, I have a feeling, just kind of like with watercolor, if you start small, then you can always go back. It's already really hard for me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of continue on Down. Might even do like some broken lines just to make sure I'm in the right pattern lane. Okay, that looks great so far. Whew. The hard part is connecting all these lines. I used to be really good at lettering and really like it when I was younger, but somehow I fell out of practice. Probably what it was was I thought I was better than I was. And really no one knows what this word is supposed to look like but me. And that kind of gives me a little bit of solace. All right, here goes the scary part. And what I can do is here and then meet. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I did it. So now we can just fill it in. And I'm going to start here because I think this is going to need more than one coat with that dark green. And now I just get to color in, which is the fun part. So if I was using my acrylic paint pen, I would have done it the exact same way. I would have outlined it and then filled it in. And usually what I have to do is come back in and, you know, I just kind of do a first fill-in coat and then I come back because the, you know, these are still somewhat translucent. So then I come in usually and fill in where there might be a little bit more white peeking through. But this too is a card that I can just kind of assembly style do, get one going and then move to the next and just kind of a freeing, relaxing feeling of laying down berries and then laying down leaves. Okay. Okay, I'll let that dry. Now I'm pretty much finished with this. 
if you want, and I have before. You can do some beautiful, really muted sprinkles, sprays of reds, greens, golds in here to give it a little bit more um, pizzazz. Or you can be real meticulous and you know come in and put little accents here silver or if you have like a metallic red you can do lines in the leaves I've done that before so all the details are up to you but I just wanted to show you guys how easy it was to put a wreath together and once you know the general layout of a wreath then you can kind of fill it in and make it different each time and recognizing that the the more you do it, the more you practice, the easier it's gonna be, the more enjoyable it's gonna be. And that's really what I want y'all to get from these tutorials is the joy of practicing and the beauty of putting something together that was in your mind that's now on paper. Every time an artist paints, we're gonna say, oh, it could have been better. I didn't like this, I didn't like that. And that's why the practice is so important is because you work through that and you're realizing that it's all of those things are okay because it leads you to keep working. So until next time, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you then. Happy holidays.